Hello, thank you all for coming today, and thank you to the TEDx organizers for having me here. My name is Melanie Martin. I'm a professor of physics at University of Winnipeg, and today I'm going to take you beyond the human eye. So someone once asked me if I could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? And honestly, it didn't take me too long to think, because I knew that I wanted to see inside the human body small things non-invasively. For instance, being able to see my mom's cancer as it started, watching her cancer through the treatment to make sure that it was going away, and watching her body afterwards to make sure the cancer didn't come back. <laughs> I have been bitten by a spider, real, <laughs> real actual spider. It hurt a lot. It left a pretty ugly mark. Uh, after a week of pain came a week of itching. And after all of that, no superpower. <laughs> I work with radiation all the time, and still, n no superpower. <laughs> I've injured myself in multiple ways, I've done all sorts of crazy things like comic books, and no superpower. I eventually realized that the only way I was ever going to get my superpower was to make it myself. So I am making my superpower with this uh, MRI magnet, which is from the University of Winnipeg, and it's that magnetic resonance microscopy center. So I am doing this for, for instance, my grandparents. I believe this is actually the last picture we have of my grandparents living in their own home. My grandmother was diagnosed with dementia, and because of that, we ended up having to move her and my grandfather into a personal care facility. They lost their freedom that day. They lost the freedom to make their own decisions, when they can go out, where they were going to go out, what they were going to eat for dinner, when they were going to go to sleep, who they were going to see that day, and people coming in and out of their bedroom at all times. They had no freedom to do what they wanted. My family also lost our freedom. I was no longer free to work when I needed to, to look after my own family, because I was constantly being asked to look after them. So I hope, with my MRI methods, I can bring freedom simply by seeing in the brain. Imagine the freedom a doctor could have if a doctor could look at an image of a brain like this and say, hey, I see Alzheimer's disease. It's happening now. It's just starting or any of the other diseases that go with the brain. Imagine the freedom of a pharmacologist who could say, well, now that I see the signs of the disease in the brain, I can try my treatment. And I can see, am I halting the progress of the disease? Am I making the brain go back to the way it should look like? How is it all working? And with that freedom, we could have my family back if we could have got the treatments going sooner. My grandparents could have been still living in their own home. They could have made their own decisions, made their own meals. I could have kept working. I could have seen my family. And I am trying to do all of this with my superpower using the magnet. So, as a physics professor, I thought I'd take you through a little bit of how this MRI works and how my superpower works. So that magnetic resonance imaging machine is actually just a giant magnet. So you can imagine, it's just a bar magnet with a north and a south pole. So we go ahead and we put our patient into the scanner. We're not actually imaging the patient, we're not actually imaging the tissue, we're just imaging the water inside the patient. What's the chemical formula for water? H2O. So we have two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom bonded together to make a water molecule. Turns out, in MRI, we really don't care about the oxygen. All we care about is the hydrogen. The hydrogen atom has a nucleus, and it has an electron going around. We don't care about the electron. We really just care about that nucleus. So we put a burst of energy into the body, and the nucleus will start spinning. And it's that spinning that we detect to make our image. So it turns out that the molecule beyond spinning also doesn't hold still, unless it's at absolute zero. 
So if you remember back in January when we were at minus 50 degrees Celsius, still very, very warm for the molecules. Absolute zero is minus 273 degrees Celsius. Amazing that you can get colder than Winnipeg. <laughs> so at minus 50, those water molecules are moving around in ice. At 37 degrees Celsius, those water molecules are moving around in the human body. That motion is called diffusion, and it's what Einstein won his Nobel Prize for. So it was thought a long time ago that that diffusion would limit the resolution of MRI. How small a thing can we see with the MRI? Well, if we don't know where that molecule is during the time that we take the image, it's somewhere in that range, that's as big, or that's as small a thing as we can see. Turns out there's a group of us who are actually going ahead and using that diffusion to figure out how big things are. So if this was a cell in the human body, that's the cell membrane, and we had a molecule in there, the molecule would diffuse around. But if it turns out this cell membrane is impermeable to water, that water molecule can't get out of the cell. So if we watch its motion, the farthest it can move is the diameter of the cell. So if we were to make the MRI sensitive to that motion, we can figure out how big the cells are inside the brain. And with that, I am super helix. <laughs> I tried to get my chest plate to fit under something, but it was, didn't work. <laughs> so to take you where I want this method to go, we need to go back and look at why MRIs were used in hospitals. It was back in 1990 that Mike Mosley discovered that if a, that MRI can detect a stroke right when it happens. Before that, it took eight hours to diagnose a stroke. And in the last 30 years, being able to diagnose a stroke eight hours sooner has drastically improved the outcomes of stroke. I want to use my superpower to be able to diagnose Alzheimer's disease decades sooner. If we can improve stroke diagnosing it eight hours sooner, I can only imagine the improvement we can get diagnosing Alzheimer's 30 years sooner. So if we look at Alzheimer's disease, we find out that right now, over half a million people in Canada have Alzheimer's disease. There are 25,000 new cases of Alzheimer's disease being diagnosed every year. And we expect there's going to be almost a million people with Alzheimer's disease in Canada by 2031. If you look at what us caregivers are doing, missing work, costs for that, getting a babysitter to look after my family so I could go look after my grandparents, getting babysitters for my grandparents so I can work. All of that is coming to costs on the order of $10.4 billion per year. And right now, there are 56,000 Canadians being treated for Alzheimer's disease in a hospital. They should not be in a hospital. Hospitals are for diseases where we can do some fix, make you better, and send you home. We're not going to do some fix and make these people better and send them home. So with my method, I actually see myself making these numbers bigger. If we diagnose Alzheimer's disease decades sooner, there's going to be lots more people in Canada with that diagnosis. We're hopefully going to get lots more cases being diagnosed every year. The good news is they'll get their treatment sooner. The disease will progress more slowly, and we will keep these people out of nursing homes. And what amazes me most is, could you imagine the freedom Canadians could have with $10.4 billion more dollars in their pockets? Could you imagine the freedom we could have in our healthcare system if there were 56,000 more beds in hospitals that we could use for diseases that need them? I personally don't want to hog my superpower all to myself. <laughs> I've been training lots of people to use my superpower. Thank you, Andrea, for taking all my pictures and being my model. I was hoping one of my students might come and run down in the costume, but no luck. <laughs> so I hope that I can inspire some of the youth today to keep going with the superpowers and bring this freedom faster. I'm going to leave you today with four quotes. 
The first one is by Prabhu Deva, an Indian director. If you work hard, nothing is impossible. Second quote is from George Washington Carver, an American scientist. Education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom, which I believe our other speaker had mentioned that today too. And from A. Philip Randolph, an American activist, freedom is never granted, it is won. And then of course, from the very famous Canadian physicist, I say, go find your superpower and go make freedom for all of us. Thank you.